Hi there, it's Mr. Walsh here, and today I'm going to take you through the summary of soils. But before I move on with the lesson, just want to remind you to check out our remember to check out our website www.examrevision.ie. Subscribe to our YouTube channel youtube.com forward slash examrevision. Follow us on Twitter for all the latest news, tips, and exam hints at examrevision for you, or follow us on Instagram at examrevision for you. So the first thing we need to learn is what is soils. Okay, so soil is the layer of loose material that we find on the Earth's surface. And without soil, we would not be able to grow crops. So, what is soil made up of? Well, soil is made up of five main ingredients. Okay, and they are mineral matter, air, water, living organisms, and humus. So now we know the five ingredients that make up soil. But what are these ingredients? Okay, so what is mineral matter? Well, first of all, we're going to go through the first one. So mineral matter makes up the biggest, the most of, of soil. It makes up about 43%. And it's made up of small pieces of rock. And is broken down. Okay, sorry, just go. by weathering and erosion. And erosion. The second one is air, and air just fills the space between the soil. It contains oxygen and nitrogen. And this is essential for plants and organisms to actually live in the soil. Second part, water. Water contains dissolved minerals and plants absorb these minerals through the roots to help them grow. And these minerals are called nutrients. Living organisms, these are things such as earthworms, slugs, wood lice, insects and millions of microorganisms that we can find in uh, soil. These living organisms break down dead plants and animals to help us create humus. And the last one, humus. Humus is dark decaying organic matter. So dark decaying organic matter. And it's the remains of dead creatures, plants, leaves, and grass. So all vegetation, uh, all the vegetation that has fallen off or is, uh, is now uh, essentially just rotting on the ground. And this humus provides nutrients for the soil. So it's, this humus is really, really important um, for good soil. The more humus you have, usually the better soil that you get. Okay, so if you dig down into the ground, you'll reach the bedrock. And you'll be able to, if, to see a number of different layers. And each of these layers are very, very important. And these make up the soil profile. So right at the top, you have the plant litter. The next layer is called A horizon. The next layer is called the B horizon. And the very bottom layer is called the C horizon. Each of these layers make up the soil profile and each of these layers are very, very important. And students must know what, uh, is, in, what is the characteristics of the A horizon, the B horizon and the C horizon. So in the A horizon, it's the upper layer, upper layer, topsoil layer, that's where you find your topsoil. It's dark in colour. Oh, no mistake, dark in colour. 
lots of humus and microorganisms. Are present. In this layer. The next layer, the B horizon, it's beneath the topsoil. It's called the subsoil. It's known as the subsoil layer. Subsoil layer. It's lighter in colour. It's so lighter in colour. And less humus than A horizon and has more rocks than A horizon. And the last one, the C horizon, this is the parent rock. So it's the underlying rock, and it's made up of the bedrock and pieces of rock. The next thing you need to know is leaching, soil leaching, okay? And soil leaching is the process by which the soil nutrients in the A horizon are washed down to the B horizon because of heavy rainfall. And this is a bad thing, this is a very bad thing for, for, for soil because soil loses its fertility. You don't want, you want your A horizon to be nice and fertile because it's got, you want all the plant roots to be able to, to go down and to receive all the nutrients so they will grow nice and uh, big. But if all your nutrients are in the B horizon, well then your plants, unless they've got really long roots, won't be able to reach down that far. So leaching occurs when you get heavy rainfall and the nutrients are washed from the A horizon down to the B horizon. If this continues and this heavy rainfall continues, what happens is then you will develop a hard pan. And the hard pan is just on the top of the B horizon and on the bottom of the A horizon. And this is when all the nutrients that have been washed down from the A horizon actually come together and are cemented together. And they form this impermeable crust. And this is really bad because what will happen is when you get a hard pan, all the water then won't be able to pass down and infiltrate down into the soil. So what will happen is this area here, the A horizon, will become waterlogged and any plants or crops that is growing will, will die because they'll just have too much water because they'll be, they'll be waterlogged. So just to sum up, soil leaching is when you get heavy rainfall and all the nutrients are washed from A horizon then to the B horizon. If this continues as heavy rainfall, sometimes you can get a hard pan can develop and this is, is severe leaching and it's really, really bad for soil. In Ireland, we have four main types of soil. First soil is the brown earth soils, okay? These are the best soils and lucky for us, uh, they make up the most um, of, our, of our soils, as you can see in the map there. The second one, podzol soils. Okay, so the podzol soils are just the little grey bits that you can see up here, okay? So we're not too many podzol, podzol soils found in Ireland. Then we've got the PT soils. So the PT soils, it's this dark colour here that you can see found along the west and then the set west. The last one is the glaze soils and the glaze soils are this orange colour here. So for your genius exam you need to know three soil types, okay? Two in Ireland and one outside of Ireland, okay? So the first one I recommend to learn is the brown earth soils. So the first thing about brown earth soils is that they're very fertile. So very fertile and if they've got good fertility that means that they're good for farming for agriculture they're brown in color there's no leaching so they're ideal for growing crops because there's no leaching They are full of humus, so lots of humus, because they're found with the, beside deciduous forests. And as you know, deciduous forests means that they'll lose their leaves in autumn. And if they lose their leaves, what happens is the leaves fall on the ground, 
when they fall on the ground, so leaves fall on the ground, what happens then is they start to decay and this forms the, the humus and this humus then will go into the A horizon, okay? And this will give this A horizon its fertility and provide then the plants and crops with all the nutrients they need to grow. And the last thing you need to know where they're found. So they're found quite lucky, like I said, they're most of Ireland. They're found in the east of Ireland, found in the Midlands of Ireland, and in the south. The next soil type that I recommend you learn are the podsoil soils, okay? So you need to know a few things about these, and podsoil soils are infertile. Okay, so they're not very good for growing crops and for agriculture. And the reason is because they lack humus. Not good for farming. Farming. You find leaching with these type of soils because they get heavy rainfall. They don't get much humus because they don't have deciduous uh, trees, they have coniferous trees around them. And as you know, coniferous trees don't lose their leaves in autumn, so they don't gain that humus, and which will lead to them uh, the decaying matter causing the horizon to become more fertile. Uh, so they're kind of used for rough grazing. Okay, so they're used for rough grazing. So you might you might find goats might graze here, and of course you need to know whereabouts they're found. You can find them in the southwest of Ireland. Southwest. Say west. If I'm in Donegal, press on the goal. Oh, made a mistake here. Donegal. And one more would say male as well. I found a male. The next so soil type that you need to know uh, is one outside of Ireland. And the one that I recommend you learn is the tropical red soils. Okay, the tropical red soils are found. Uh, along the equator, okay, along the equator areas, okay, and they're red in colour. This is because the minerals in the soil contain iron, so that's where it gets the name tropical red soils. These so soils support equilateral rainforest. You get a lot of chemical weathering is active, which breaks down the dead organic matter into humus, making the soil actually very fertile, and so and therefore they're good for agriculture. However, what's tend, tending to happen, particularly in Brazil, in the Amazon rainforest, is that people are cutting down the trees, deforestation. And if they cut down the trees, then the rich source of humus uh, that was once in the soil has been removed, and the soils are then subject to leaching and all the nutrients being washed away. So I'm just going to write down a few points that I made. Uh, so I found in equatorial areas red in color why are they red in color basically because they can the soil contains a lot of iron okay um, so they're rich in humus so rich in humus so very fertile Good for farming. However, because they're found, let's see, I'll just leave that there. Let's have some more space. Because they're found in equatorial regions such as Brazil, and um, found in areas such as Brazil, what's happened is we're getting a lot of deforestation. And because of this deforestation, Cutting down trees, down trees, and then this is causing um, the soil to lose fertility because no humus 
is present anymore. And the soil becomes subject to leaching where all the nutrients are washed away. Okay, so the very last part you need to know for, the, for this chapter is how human activity is actually causing soil erosion. Soil erosion means the wearing away and basically topsoil has been lost due to wind and rain, so it does naturally, but it's also been lost because of soil erosion and human activity is cause is creating like and causing like soil erosion to become worse and there's a few factors that that humans are doing that is causing soil erosion the first one is overgrazing so overgrazing is the grazing of too many animals uh, on an area of land all the vegetation cover is then removed because the plants or because the the animals are eating all the vegetation and the, the land is left too bare. The land is now exposed to the wind and the rain and can get er eroded away easily. The second one is overcropping. Okay, overcropping is the planting of too many crops in the, in the same area. This reduces the soil fertility. The soil is left bare with no plant covering and is easy and is easily eroded by the wind and rain. A good example of this is South America. The third reason how human activity is causing soil erosion is deforestation. Humans are cutting down too many trees and once this, the trees are cut down the soil is exposed and because of wind and rain soil erosion takes place. Okay, so a question you might get in the exam is how is how has human activity increased soil erosion? Um, but you might also get a question on how we how we as humans can actually reduce soil erosion. So my question to you is how do we reduce soil erosion? Well, there's a few different things we could do. Okay, so so the first thing that we could do is that we could do some reforestation. Sometimes it's called afforestation, and basically this is when you plant trees and shrubs. Okay, and if you plant more trees and shrubs, the roots will hold the soil in place, and this will therefore reduce soil erosion. It will also act as a defense against the wind because the trees will actually break the wind, which will reduce soil erosion even further. The second thing you could do is terrace setting. Okay, and terrace setting is when humans construct small steps on the side of mountain slopes, and these steps are surrounded by a low wall which keeps the soil and water in place. And the last way, the third and final way, is contour ploughing. And this is when we plough at right angles to the slope. The ploughed ridges reduce the downhill movement of the water and soil. And this will therefore uh, reduce soil erosion. Okay, that's the whole chapter for soils completely finished. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please can you leave me some feedback on my YouTube uh, channel. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. and um, Follow me on Twitter at exam revision for you or Instagram if you want uh, exam revision for you and please 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 remember to check out our website www.examrevision.ie